Is Boston's Game 5 loss to Atlanta concerning? I want to start with this. Okay. Give Trey Young a lot of credit for last night. Ooh. Down DeJounte Murray on the road in TD Garden, yeah. facing elimination, and, and he had a, a great game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, last night he had a 100% usage rate in clutch time. That's unheard of. He literally did everything for the Atlanta Hawks down the stretch. But I am concerned about the Boston Celtics. Do I think they're going to win this series? I do think they will win this series. Long term, though, I saw last night a lot of the problems that popped up last year in the playoffs when they struggled. And that comes down to decision making. Mm -hmm. And there was some poor decision making last night. And I'd love to show you some of those poor decisions with some B-roll here. Let's go. All right, so this is Tatum getting double teamed. Bad pass. Still had his dribble. Compounds it with a foul. Tatum Brown, those are the two guys that had problems last year. Making turnovers. Marcus Smart, illegal screen. Boston, two-point lead with a minute 52. That's two turnovers here. Very next play, Tatum bats the ball out of bounds. Technical foul, so they compound another foul with a technical. And here, this is inexcusable. Jalen Brown jumping in the air, makes the decision on the fly. They get the, the two-point lead, and then Trey Young gets fouled at half court by Marcus Smart. That is a bad foul. And then on this last play, Marcus Smart too late with the double. Jalen Brown way too far back with the pickup point. Yes, Trey Young made a ridiculous shot, but that is six bad plays down the stretch mm. for the Boston Celtics. You, you're going to get past Atlanta. I believe that. Yeah. You're going to go against six, the Sixers in the next series. You're going to go against the Heat, the Knicks, or the Bucks in the series after that. You're going to go against the Suns, the Nuggets, the Lakers, the Warriors, the Kings in the next series after that. You can't afford to make these mistakes down the stretch of a basketball game. I agree with you. There's no, re <clears throat> there's no refuting that, but I'm still unconcerned. I'm still unconcerned about this game because I think ultimately Trey Young showed up, showed out last night. He's skilled enough. He's gifted enough, particularly in pressurized moments, to step up and show you that he can, he can deliver the goods in moments the way that he did. But I'm going to harken back, uh, J.J., to what you talked about when you talked about uh, Trey Young earlier this year. He hasn't had the greatest season. I drew up a stat. I found a stat um, last night. Of the 458 <laughs> players with at least one – thousand field goal attempts this season Trey Young was tied for the third worst effective field goal percentage in the league at 48.5 only rookie of the year uh, uh, Paolo Banquero and, and Terry Rozier were worse that's it we see a volume guy but not necessarily high in efficiency we understand that there's been other issues going on in Atlanta I think that the Boston Celtics are obviously a superior team, and I think they walked into last night's game taking it for granted. Now, we don't see any evidence that Missoula is a worse coach than Ime Udoka. Obviously, they won six more games during the regular season. Obviously, they're here in the postseason. They're doing their thing. We get all of that. Offensive efficiency was a little bit better this year than it was last year. We get all of that. But here's the flip side. It's the playoffs now. And the Boston Celtics, who are the reigning defending Eastern Conference champions, it is entirely conceivable that with them being superior to Atlanta throughout the series for the most part, combined with the fact that DeJounte Murray didn't play last night, that sometimes these kind of weaknesses will show themselves. You take a team for granted, you're on your home turf, you think you're going to close them out, and you don't play with the level of urgency that you should have played with. I think they do that. They correct that in game six. I don't think this goes back to Boston. I think they go back on the road. Jason Tatum is going to resemble what he looked like in games one and two when he was shooting the ball from the field and from three-point range more effectively than he's had over the last three games. I think they close Atlanta out in game six. Well, I mean, one problem about just last night, they also lost game three where they gave up 70-something points at the half, up 2-0. They could have made it an easy series. They didn't do that. They lost game three in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. I'd be worried about the Celtics. Now, listen, I agree. You got to look at they're going to win, and they'll probably win game six. And, you know, I still think they'd be favored against Philly, but they're erratic, and they're not completely trustworthy. You did a great job with the six calls. All right, you want to debate the technical foul? Bottom line is don't bat the ball out of bounds. That's an automatic, though. That's, yeah, an, so that's, that's an automatic? The, that's the oh, they out automatic? Yeah, that's, that's I mean, it ball. wasn't egregious. Yeah. If it's automatic, okay. But, I mean, they just are not completely trustworthy as a team. And, I, and they lose a lot of home games. Bucks beat them twice last year in, in the, in the uh, second round. Miami beat them. Atlanta beat them. Golden State beat them twice. They lose a lot of games in that building, which also is a little bit concerning. Uh, listen, uh, I don't know who is going to – I think they probably – 
Now the Bucks are down 3-1. I, I don't know what to think about the Bucks. I think the Bucs can come back and win. But uh, maybe the Southerners get out of the East, but I don't think they win in the NBA championship. I cannot completely trust them. And they got a better team than they did last year because Brogham's Brogham sitting there. And obviously they got a little more depth than everything else. I don't think they win in the NBA championship. I don't completely trust them. And last night would be the case in point. To me, it's not about Trey Young. They won okay. Good win. Good performance. Made some shots. They're going to lose on Thursday anyway. To me, it's about what this means for the Celtics. JJ, is erratic a fair characterization for the Celtics? I, it, it's, it's weird because if you look across the regular season and if you look at last year's playoff run, you can't argue with the end result. They were top two in defense, top two in offense in the regular season this year. They were two games away from an NBA championship last season. But I think erratic can be a descriptor of this team, mm. and it comes down to erratic decision-making. And I'll, I'll give you another decision I didn't like. They played the large majority of clutch time last night, with, clutch time last night without their third best player on the floor. Okay, let's, Eric, remind, Eric White. let's remind our audience what clutch, clutch time, time is because in the exactly. last five minutes, last five minutes, five points. under five points, yeah, we right? Which was just, basically the last. I'm just saying, that everybody, JJ and I know that, but they don't know that. Okay, was, but Derek White was not on the floor. Yeah. He's been their third best player in the series. And I understand you trust Marcus Smart, you trust How Horford and Williams to get. I understand all that. You got to find a way to put Derek White on the floor at the end of the game. I agree. Availability is the best ability, yeah. right? We talk about that a lot mm -hmm. during the football season. What should the Clippers do with Kawhi and Paul George? Need an ISO. Put the camera on me right now, please. Steve Ballmer and the Los Angeles Clippers should force Kawhi Leonard to retire. I'm done. He needs to go home. Okay? So, I'm not in any way questioning the legitimacy of Kawhi Leonard's injury. A matter of fact, I'm fully embracing it. I've heard very, very alarming stories about his health. You see people talking about he's walking around all limping all the time. He is not a healthy individual. I'm not questioning his heart. I'm not questioning his courage. I'm not questioning any of that. The man's a two-time champion. He's a two-time MVP. I said it the other day, and I said it, and I regretted it only because we heard about some stuff that happened with his family, and I didn't know that was in the news and stuff like that. And I don't wish that enough. God bless you and your family, and I hope everything ends up well for everybody. But he is the absolute worst superstar you could possibly have on your team. He's barely ever there. And on top of it all, he does nothing to market or promote your franchise. Absolutely, positively nothing. He got $42 million this year. Him and Paul George are making identical dollars to the penny. $42 million in change this year. $45 million in change next year. And then a player option at $48 million. He couldn't go last year at all. Okay? Couldn't go this year when it counted. In the past, he couldn't go when it counted. Rob to Toronto telling them, don't look for me for more than 65 games. Didn't even give him 60 games. Hasn't given you at least 60 games in the season in at least the last four years. Okay? And then the playoffs come. And this is the difference between him and a Paul George, or various other people. We see them get hurt. We'll watch Kawhi drop 38 one game like he did in game one against Phoenix, 31 in game two, walk off the court, and then the next thing you know, Ty Lue gets a net. He ain't, he ain't available today. And oh, by the way, he ain't available next week. And, and, and he ain't available the next game. You don't know why, but you, you hear, and you hear, and you hear stories. Yes, they have a medical staff. You hear about he got his own medical, his own medical team. But damn it, they should be fired. He's never healthy when it counts. And again, if you're not marketing and promoting the sport, if you're not, if all you're doing is saying, I'm going to grab my lunch pail and play. But 50% of the time, you ain't grabbing your lunch pail to play. It's the worst possible thing that you can have. If the, I'm going to say this. Devin Booker's sensation. Kevin Durant is that dude. You know how I feel about him. Kawhi Leonard and Paul George healthy for this series. Clippers win this series. Because I don't like the fact that Monty Williams is reliant so much on Kevin Durant and Devin Booker averaging over 43 minutes a game. That's not sustainable to me. I think the Clippers would have won this series if both of them were healthy. That was not the case. And in the end, I think it's like, listen, you're the second largest market in the United States of America. You're in Los Angeles, man. The Lakers, it's Laker Nation, Laker Town. You know what Steve Baum and them got to compete against. You got an elite owner. Lawrence Frank is a, is a, a well-respected executive. Ty Lue is considered one of the best coaches in the business. And this is what you got to rely on as, as a player. It's over for me. They just, it, like, we could talk about the game and all of that stuff, but 
the, the culminating point, the end result is, to me, it should be the end. And I say that because I, 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 I called some league officials this morning, and I want to know specifically, what can you do to get rid of Kawhi Leonard and make sure he get his money? He got sure his policy. He, 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 he can make it, and you can, you, can, you can carve it out through the years, make sure he gets every penny. Just give him his money and go. Because you can't rely on him. You got to move on. If you're the Clippers, you got to move on. Uh, you might disagree, so I, and I agree with him. First of all, they would have beaten him maybe with only one of them. If Kawhi played, they could have won a series even without George. It was 1-1. They had a chance. To me, now he's going to laugh at me, but let him laugh. Willis Reed's out there on the court. Oh, God. Larry Bird's playing. Oh, Lord. You got to go play. We weren't going there. Dude. You got to. Oh, Steven? Lord. Steven, he's making $43 million a year. You just said nobody saw him get hurt. He had 38 in game one. He had 31 in game but two. But I'm not questioning the you victory, gotta, though. Well, I mean, I'm not saying he's not hurt. I well, believe he's hurt. Figure, cut it out. Get out there and play. Try it. Play 10 minutes. See what you got in you. He didn't even try it. You can't do this as a playoff scenario. But what if you really mess up I mean, your knee? Yeah. Well, I mean, hey. And then you're done. Willis Reed played. Bird played with concussions. Play. It's your I, knee. It's a slippery uh, slope. I don't buy it. Okay, you got, you guys, going you, I'm not going JJ. there. I don't put me in that. No, I, I didn't I'll go there. I, I didn't no go there. I'm not going it. there. I have no problem right. saying it. The same thing with Zion. Windmills in the freaking in the layup line. Guy's got 198 million dollars. Well, that's different. To him. That's play different. the game. That's different. Give it a shot. I'm not asking Kawhi to play 45 minutes. Can you play five minutes and start the game to see if you can gut yourself, gut, okay. uh, fight your way through it? That 36 hours before that, he had 31 points. 31, and he dominated. He played great. And the day and a half before that, he had 38 and they won. Now, a ten, so he can play 10.30 on a Thursday night, and he can't play 12.30? I can, I, can I just say one thing before you jump in? But in the same breath, Stephen A. saying that everyone knows he's hot. Everybody knows he's injured. Who, everybody. Who's everybody, Stephen? All, all the players, but, but, everybody. All the players, everybody. So maybe but that's, 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 so maybe that's they why he's injured. No, 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 no. Are they they protect no one, no one, in fairness to Kawhi Leonard, no one has questioned the legitimacy of his injuries. Half the time they look at him and they're shocked he did play because of how he was walking around the day of games. They're not questioning his injuries. They all legitimately state. So how do we explain his great performance in the first two games of the series and then he goes out 24 hours later and he can't play at home 1-1 against Durant in a playoff scenario when he's making $43 million a year for a team that has never gotten out of the conference final? You got to give it a go for a few minutes. Well, they only, got, they do. They only got to the conference finals right. once. What? That was That's what I mean. What? Never got out of the conference final. Right. All right, Jay, a lot go, to go unpack. Ahead. Let's hear from a former player. <laughs> There's a lot to unpack there. Um, I mean this in the nicest way possible to both of you, but listening to each of you right now, it's very obvious that you've played zero high-level basketball, and you do not understand the requirements of doing that. And I do mean that in a nice way. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.